Welcome to another tutorial video. In this video, we'll explore the new MEL virtual memory functions. We introduced those functions to Thinking Particle 7.3 Service Pack 2. If you haven't seen the previous video yet, I recommend checking it out. Our main focus in this tutorial will be to demonstrate how to use these new memory functions to build upon an existing particle simulation. I'm your host, Edwin Braun. Let's explore these new functions together. Let's get started. Okay, let's start with the previous scene we had with our tutorial. And in the tutorial before, if you did not uh, see it or watch it yet, please do so because I explain how we apply the UV coordinates to the particles. But for now, in this tutorial, we are just discussing the new features we've added to Thinking Particles 7.3 Service Pack 2. And these are the memory, the virtual memory features. But before we do so, let me just play back the animation and we'll see how the image uh, falls apart and is reassembled again. Let me just play this back. So we could beautifully see that the image was taken apart, the particles whirling around. So it's exactly like we did in our first tutorial. But the last part, when it's reassembling out of chaos back to the original image, how did we do that? Let's explore this. And we are going to use the new functions we have introduced in Service Pack 2. So the setup is, as I mentioned before, exactly the same. So go watch the previous uh, tutorial video to learn how we did the particle effect. But what we added now in Service Pack 2, let me just open up the first dynamic set. So what we did add is functions to address virtual memory. Usually you would do this or you can do this as well with the memory node and connect a memory node and work with the standard uh, thinking particles memory node. However, you don't need to do this anymore. We expanded MEL scripting in that way that we now have a memory input where we just say or define a memory description. And you might notice you can give it a name. That's your memory so to say, your memory slot, but we don't get an input. So that's all a virtual memory, a placeholder, so to say. So like with any other input, we just give it a name or a variable name so that we can address our memory slot and we tell it what type it is. Is it a vector or is it a scalar value? When we've done this, we have registered or created a memory slot named Oripos, in this case, original position of our particles. And then when we create our particles down here, we have a memory set function. So above here, we create our memory slot, so to say. And now we are writing with our memory set function, we are writing the original position into memory. So we get the particle ID, we get the original position of the particle, that's our position uh, variable here. And what we want to do is we want to write, access our memory slot. And we do that with the name underscore M. So that's how we access this original position variable or memory slot. So that's actually all we needed to do is we want to remember the original position of the particles when we created the Mona Lisa particle representation. Then here comes the really great feature we added to MEL in our animation expression. We can now access the memory without um, configuring or addressing or creating a new input. So once we create a memory slot with MEL, it's accessible throughout dynamic sets and you can just reference it by name. So all what we did is added some uh, new variables. So that, those are general variables. And the great thing is, as I already mentioned, 
we still have access to the memory we created in this expression, me L node, or in any other dynamic set, we can address this with the name of our variable or memory slot, and that's our ori pause underscore m. What we do here is we use the memory get, and all these functions are described in our online manual. So you can just go with your cursor here and press the selective help button, and it will bring up the help of our memory get and examples how to use it. So the mem global virtual memory functions are all described in here, and you can get all these functions, what parameters they need and how they work. So that's really a nice thing. You can all, always do that and read about how to do these functions. But what we do here practically is just read out. So we're getting the memory position. We are reading out the original position and then we can do multiple ways to bring back the particles. Uh, what we do here is we just uh, decide how long should it take to bring back the particles. Then we uh, make sure that our factor is not faster than the original uh, speed of the particles. And then what we are doing here is I'm using a value to value curve that lets me control how fast we bring back these particles. And then it's just uh, we are calculating um, a speed, a velocity at which we want to bring back the particles to the original position we have here. And then we just set the velocity of the particle. Just to show you that we can control with a value to value node, what we do here, how fast we bring back the particles. Let me just turn the curve into such a way. So that will allow us, let me just move that a little bit out. So you see the curve here before it was way down here. So we had it very slow uh, bring back. So let's have a look how it looks like now. So we can see we are much, much faster back to the full image. So that's the beauty of our MEL scripting language. We can create fully procedural and still controllable effects with just a few MEL functions. Um, let me just summarize again so that we have this overview of what's new here in Thinking Particles Service Pack 2. We added these memory functions and you can read them up as I mentioned just put your cursor here, press the selective help button, and you can read up about the global virtual memory function we introduced, how they work, what you need to do. We have samples, how you can call these functions and what you can do. But the real power here is in the first script where we create our particles. So for one time, we create this picture with particles and UV maps. When we calculate the UV maps, we just calculate store the position along in this memory slot. Then later, at any time in any dynamic set, we access this memory just by the using the function memory get. We specify the memory slot name, so it's our ori pos underscore m, and we get the original position, and then we can do all kinds of fancy things to bring back our particles to their original positions. And this wraps up our tutorial video. I hope you enjoyed this short and quick tutorial video and learned how the new memory functions in MEL can help you create amazing effects. Thank you again for watching this video and make sure to check out our other videos as well. The best place to watch these tutorial videos is on Vimeo. We have our own dedicated channel there. Please go and visit the Vimeo tutorial channel. Thank you again. Goodbye.